if you're not making 100K yet and you want to, what is that gap that is that you feel is the biggest thing in the way of where you are now to where you want to be? How is everybody today? Everybody ready to uh, to understand how to unlock more income in your real estate business with a proven plan? If you're ready to um, learn how to make $100,000 plus with a proven blueprint, type in 100K in the chat. Let me hear from you. Type in 100K if you want to learn the proven blueprint that's worked over and over and over and over and over and over again on how to make $100,000 plus in real estate. There we go. 100K. Jimmy's ready to make some money. There we go. I love it. So... Um, I, I like making these interactive. And so I've got a presentation. I've got a pr the proven process to go over. I'm going to give you guys everything I have today. Um, but I want to make these as beneficial to you as possible. And so I appreciate your interaction so far. The more interactive you make this, the more questions you ask, the more you interact, the more you will get out of it. These are This is going to be customized to what you guys want me to talk about. Um, I have the blueprint, but there's always nuances. There's always subtleties. So whatever question you have, please. Don't be shy. Ask your questions. We're doing this to provide value to you and answer your questions. So if I were to ask you right now um, in your real estate business, what is the biggest gap that you have? What if you're not making 100K yet and you want to, what is that gap that is that you feel is the biggest thing in the way of where you are now to where you want to be? And that doesn't even have to be 100K. Maybe you're already making 100K. Maybe you're making a million. Maybe you're whatever. I don't that that's kind of irrelevant. What is the biggest gap that you have in the business that is between where you are and where you want to be? What do you feel like is the biggest gap, the biggest thing that the barrier obstacle in your way of becoming the agent, making the income, having the success that you truly desire in this business? What is that one thing? Go ahead and type that in the chat. More leads. Love it. Lack of clients. More clients are always a good thing. I love that. What else we got? I think there's, it's important to note leads and clients are two different things. Sometimes we think they're the same. Um, I did a, I did a talk on this in, it was at RiseCon in Vegas. And um, I think a lot of people misinterpret. They don't have enough sales. So they say, I'm a, I'm a real estate, I don't have enough sales. I need more leads. But more leads don't equal more sales. There's the magic right there from Rachel. Converting leads. More leads don't equal more sales. But how do you actually take these leads or these opportunities and actually convert them? We're going to dive a little bit into that today. Uh, more clients. Following systems consistently. Absolutely. You got to have the system, but you also have to have the accountability, the mindset, the environment to follow it. Good stuff. Um, so I think this is spot on to what we're going to cover today. So I appreciate your guys' participation. And as, as, as I said earlier, um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to um, ask questions as we go. If I don't get to it right away and I'm in the middle of the flow, I will I will come back to it. Um, so ask it while it's top of mind. You're not going to interrupt me. I want to make sure you guys get the most out of it. So let's just dive in. I don't know if Warren's going to be able to make it back. So we'll just rock and roll with it. All right. Let's see. You guys see my presentation here? You guys see the slide? How to make 100K in real estate. You guys see that? With If Lauren's not even able to come on here, I want to make sure that this is working properly. Can you guys see my screen, the slide deck? Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. All right. So we're going to give you the blueprint that I have, that I've coached several people on my team to. I've coached other team leaders to coach their agents on. Um, and it's just, it is a proven blueprint. I don't, if you know me, if you don't know me, I don't believe in theory. If you do know me, you know, I coach proven only. And these are proven things that have worked in the past, are working in the present and will work in the future. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, if you haven't met me yet, this is just a little quick bio. I'll go through this quickly. Um, I run the number one team in the state of Missouri. We were ranked, the real new Real Trends came out. We we're actually number two in Missouri um, uh, this year. We're number one in mid-Missouri in our area by far. 
Uh, but there's some big cities that a, a team has multiple offices that just destroyed it. I think there were like 1,800 transactions. Um, kudos to them. So we're actually number two in Missouri. We have been ranked as high as number one in Missouri. And this year, um, number 45 in the nation. So something we're really, really proud of. Um, we're on pace to close over 800 transactions this year. We've been Inc. 5000, fastest growing company three years in a row. I'm honored and privileged to be a business partner with one of my good friends and mentors, John Cheplak, the best leadership real estate coach on the planet. I coach with him personally. I have a couple of businesses with him and I'm also a coach for him. It gives me the privilege to coach some of the top teams um, on the planet and network in the rooms with the top performers on the planet, which is where I get a lot of this data to share with you guys. And so I share that not to brag. I share that to just, oh, Lauren's back. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, we've got a lot of background noise, Lauren. There we go. Okay. That's okay. All right. So um, I share all of that with you um, just to, to give you that. Again, this is theory or this isn't theory. This is proven. Um, and, and there goes Lauren again. Lauren, they're not going to be able to see or hear you because you disappeared again. Okay. All right. Let me work off, offline with the marketing team to figure out. All right. Bye. I bet. Um, this is probably really weird for you guys. I appreciate you sticking around. I don't know what's going on. Lauren needs to restart her computer or something. Um, anyway. All right. So let's dive in. Here's what I, here's what I want you to know. Anyone can make a hundred thousand dollars plus in real estate. Anyone can, but not everyone will. The recent NAR stats came out. Um, does anyone know what the average real estate agent sells per year? According to the national association of realtors, put it in the chat. How many homes per year does the average agent sell per year? How many homes per year is the average agent sell according to National Association of Realtors? What is that number? Put it in the chat for me. How many homes per year? And as you guys are putting that in the chat, um, I think there's a couple of things that are really important to, re to, to realize with this statement. Anyone can, but not everyone will. And so what's the difference? I think it comes down to two key components. What is their mindset? And what is the environment that they're in? You know, there, I go back and forth. And I used to say everything in life starts with mindset. Lauren, it kicked you out again. You're just going to have to give up. I don't know what's going on. All right. Have fun. All right. Um, sorry, guys. Um, uh, so anyway, back to mindset environment. I used to say that everything in life starts with mindset. And I think mindset is crucial. It is very important, especially in this business where we deal with rejection. We deal with so many things outside of our control, inventory levels, interest rates. Like we're helping people with the biggest purchase sale of their life. We're dealing with rejection on a daily basis. Like there's a lot that goes into this career. So you have to have the proper mindset. But I, I've recently dove in more into environment stuff. And I think your environment is so crucial and affects your mindset. I think I used to think of those as separate. But if you have the right mindset and the wrong environment, you're still not going to be super successful. But if you have a bad mindset in the right environment, if that environment is strong enough, it will help improve your mindset. And so I'm not not going to come out here and say something controversial like the environment's more important than mindset. But I'm, I teeter and totter on these two. And I think they're just very, very crucial that you have them both. And so when I say environment, to me, that means culture. That means who are the agents in your office? Who are the agents in your circle? What events do you go to? Who are the coaches in your life? Who, who is training you on these things? Are you actually following people that are doing it, that are giving you their playbooks of what actually works, not, hey, I think this might work, or I read this in a textbook once, and people that are actually doing that, and people that are actually giving back and contributing. See, what I've realized being in some of the top rooms in the, in the, in the world with the top performers is the people at the bottom compete. The people at the top collaborate. And that's one of the things I love about the John Cheplak circle that I'm fortunate to be in um, and all these rooms, but also with my EXP network that I'm in. And it's like I just I'm surrounded by like minded individuals. And we just started something new. If you haven't seen it yet, um, just a quick plug. It's totally free, just contribution based. It's called Top Agent Nation, where we're doing weekly Monday masterminds. Um, where We're just giving our playbooks. And we're just sharing what's working for the top performers. And it's just really, really cool to see that you're in the right environments, even if it's not local, because that's a national network that I'm a part of. But everyone collaborates together because of the environment. And that really affects your mindset in a positive way. 
Uh, back to the question. You guys, I see the answer six, five, four, twelve. Um, thank you for answering. The number actually went down. Recent study I read. So last year, the average agent sold between three and four. That's been five to six for years. It actually went down last year. Not only did we lose 70,000 agents, the average agent actually went down in the number of homes that they sold, three to four. So what's the difference in the average agent that sells three to four and the $100,000 agent? We're going to dive into that. What is the difference between the average agent and the $100,000 agent? I think the average agent likes to point the finger. The average agent will say, once the market gets better, so will my business. The average agent says, well, if I just had better leads, I would sell more real estate. The average agent says, well, if the interest rates improve, if inventory gets better, then my business will grow. But I'll just tell you a secret. The $100,000 agent, they have a whole different outlook. This, this whole August thing that's coming down the pipe, the $100,000 agent's excited for it. The average agent's scared to death. But keep in mind, the average agent probably isn't on this webinar today because the average agent isn't growth-minded, isn't in the right environment, doesn't have the growth mindset, isn't willing to adapt and evolve, isn't willing to learn, isn't willing to try new things. The average agent says things like, well, that's how I've always done it. And the average agent is going to be another statistic in this year. Has anyone seen that the guess, the guesses and the projections of how many agents are going to get out of the business the next 12 months? It was $70,000, 70,000 agents last year. Is it put in the chat? What do you, how many agents over the next 12 months do you think have been projected to get out of the business with these new changes in our industry? Not only interest rates staying um, higher than what they have been in recent past. I don't think they're historically high, but they, they're still higher than what they have been in the recent past, recent history. Um, and then all these NAR changes. How many agents do you think are projected to get out of the business in the next 12 months? Anyone know that number? Type in the chat. 50,000. It's a great guess. Any other guesses? When I heard the number 70,000 got out of the business last year, my mind was blown. Like, can you just fathom how many people 70,000 is? We've got 100,000, 100,000. Great guesses. 70,000 agents, that's a lot of people. What does the average agent think when they hear that number? The average agent thinks, man, that sucks. This business is getting tougher. The $100,000 agent says, good. Get rid of the get rid of the bottom feeders. Get rid of the ones not willing to do the work. Get rid of the ones not willing to adapt. Get rid, rid of the ones not open-minded. Get rid of the ones that aren't coachable, that aren't willing to take the, make the different changes that this marketplace requires and develop the skill sets and take the actions that are needed. The average agent doesn't see this as I'm just going to be the next and there's nothing I can do about it. The $100,000 agent says this market is happening for me, not to me. Let's say that again. The $100,000 agent is saying this market is happening for me, not to me. See, I'm not, they're not a victim of the market. The projection, by the way, over the next 12 months that I've heard, 200,000 agents project, projected to get out of the business. I don't share that to scare you. I share that to show if you're the $100,000 agent with you being here today, you're telling me that you are. That should get you excited. That should put the biggest smile on your face because the opportunity season is here. If you're willing to be open minded, if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to build the skills required, if you can do those things with this framework we lay out for you today, this market adjustment that we are going through, these changes in our industry will be the best thing that happened to your business. I truly believe that in my heart. I think this quote is very powerful. As an agent, every day you wake up without an appointment, you're technically unemployed. See, I made a, um, a controversial statement on social media, which I happen to do from time to time. Uh, I did this recently and I, just, I believe it in my heart, so I share it. And that, that statement was, 
If you're real estate, if you're in real estate and you didn't set an appointment today, what did you do? Question mark. It blew up with all the haters and everyone saying there's much more to real estate than setting appointments. There's this. I did this. I did that. And all of these excuses of why they didn't set an appointment. While the ones that are making 100K plus, the ones that are winning, they just told me how many appointments they set and what they're going to do to set more tomorrow. You see the difference? We can point the finger and say, oh, well, this, this statement doesn't apply to me. But if no one signed an agreement to work with you today, you're unemployed. And so if you just have that mindset and you adjust and you shift and realize I need to be proactive, I have to be aggressive and go out and get business. Don't just wait for business to come. Let me be proactive and go out and get it. Let me provide massive value where people want to work with me. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, I think something too, like why, I think I'm jumping ahead. Here we go. Why agents don't make $100,000 per year? They don't have leads. We're going to teach you how to get free leads in this webinar. They don't have coaching. I'm going to give you the coaching and the proven blueprint in this webinar. They don't have training. Guess what? I'm going to give you some of that. And if you need more, go listen to my podcast for free. Go check out my website, allornothinginrealestate.com. Go join my private Facebook group, All or Nothing in Real Estate private group. All those are free. I just give back to give all of this stuff, including scripts and dialogues and you name it. At the end of this webinar, I'm giving away some things for free that will actually help you with this, giving some of our proven processes away so that you can win at a high level. You got to stay till the end and I'm giving those away. Uh, no training. What about a CRM? How many agents do you know that actually don't even keep leads in their CRM properly? It just blows my mind, right? What's a CRM? Well, you got to have a CRM and you got to work your leads proactively, not reactively. So you got to start collecting all that data. Um, they also, in the CRM, they don't have a follow cadence. The fortunes in the follow up. The biggest gap that I see in agents' business today, and I've seen it for the last however many years that I've had the perspective of coaching other agents. They lack the skills in follow-up. You see, every agent wants new leads. But what do you know on average how long it takes the average lead to convert? Depending on which study you read, it takes 18 plus months. And so why do you want that lead today that's not going to transact for 18 months from now? I want that person 18 months ago. And I want to put them in my proven marketing process in my funnel so I can send them e-alerts. I can send them market updates. I can send them what's happening in our community. I can send them a buyer or seller tip. I can follow up with them consistently to model and demonstrate the behavior that they want and the agent that they end up choosing to work with. And so we have to have follow-up. Follow-up is the number one gap. That's why more leads don't equal more sales because leads aren't ready to buy right now. 95% of leads right now in your database, 95% of leads on Zillow's database or realtor.com, you name it. 95% of leads are in the curiosity stage. I mean, they're just, they're just curious. Only 5% are in the consideration stage. That's where people make a decision. So your job as an agent, 95% of the time, is to take people from the curiosity stage and move them into the consideration stage. How, what is your process set up to do that? And if you don't have one, you don't have a follow-up cadence that you can provide value consistently, then you're, so many people are falling through the cap cracks. You see this, this pandemic market, that, this unicorn market that the pandemic created, a business has fallen in our laps. It's not realistic. It's not sustainable. It's not. It's just not. The, the pros, the agents that are making $100,000 plus, they have a consistent follow-up plan every day. Sounds simple, but how many agents don't do it? I think another thing too, I talked about mindset, but they have no, they're not rooted in something that really matters to them at their core. They don't have a clear mission. They don't have clear values. They don't have a clear principle. They have nothing driving them for the day. When the days are hard, when you pick up the phone and you get hung up on, when a mutual release comes from an inspection, when the buyer doesn't get pre-approved, when the the homeowner you met with last week that was a shoe in list with someone else. Whenever any of those things happen that happen in, to everyone in this business, what's in your core? What's in your heart to keep you going? Because I, I'll tell you what separates people is what are you willing to do on the days that you don't feel like it? What are you willing to do? Do you have a proven sales process and are you following it? It's really that simple. 
What is your minimum daily standard of activity that you need to do to win the year? Then break it down per month, break it down per week, break it down per day. Did you win the day today? Yes or no? That's your only job. I got to win the day today. You know what my win the day was? Set an appointment. Set an appointment today. If I don't set an appointment, I'm unemployed. Don't believe me? Go back and follow my social media. I just jumped back in the trenches. I just did a 30-day listing challenge with my team. I set 31 listing appointments in 30 days. I didn't want to be unemployed. I got a family to support. It's so important. I got something driving me right here. I've got people that are relying on me. And that's why I'm willing to do the work. Another thing um, within C, I'm going to go back to CRM for a second. I've got some updated notes here. And I did a, I did a webinar on this too. Um, if you guys reach out to me after this, I'm happy to share it with you. I don't know where we have it housed, but I have it housed somewhere. And it's on the basics and fundamentals of how to set up your database. Um, happy to share that with you if it would be of value. But the, some of the things that I see is we don't have a, a plan for new leads. Number one, do we have leads being generated? Are they going into a CRM? That's step one. Step two is, what is our new lead initiative? Do we, have, do we practice speed to lead, speed to opportunity? The first five minutes they need to contact. Are we doing that? Next is, for the first 10 days of the lead, are we making contact with them? And you could say, well, Matt, you said new leads aren't important. That's not what I said. I said, new leads are not where the most value is. The value is in the follow-up. But how do you develop a follow-up cadence? You have a conversation with a new lead. You determine their timeline. You determine their motivation. You determine their location. And you build a relationship and develop rapport with a human so that you can help guide them along this process and build a plan for them. And then your follow-up is easy because you're working with a person and you're no longer just a salesperson. And so what is your 10-day plan to get a connection, a two-way conversation with that person? Too many agents, one and done. Or they call them once and they send them a text and they give up. We have a 10-day blitz plan. Call, text, email first every, every day for the first 10 days. Call, text, email. Next, where do you stage your leads? Follow up. Where do you follow them up? Let me simplify. A, B, C. A is nurture weekly. B is nurture bi-weekly every other week. And C is nurture monthly. It's pretty simple. Um, that's, that's the basics. And then you follow up with them in that cadence. Um, and then something I discovered too, um, one more, two more things. Number one, average contact attempt per lead. I think you should track it. How many agents say these leads are bad? These are bad leads. These are bad leads. These are bad leads. If you don't have leads, stick with me. I'm going to teach you how to create them. But I think why most agents don't make this, they have the leads. They're just not working them properly. Or they're having the excuse with themselves that that's a bad lead. Let you in on a secret. Skill set of the agent determines the quality of the lead. Skill set of the agent determines the quality of the lead. What did I say 95% of leads are? They're in a curiosity stage. They're not considering buying or selling yet. They're just curious. How many of your leads say they're just looking? They are legitimately. Most of them are just looking. But can you take them from just looking to put them in a proven follow-up plan with a proven marketing strategy, providing enough value over time when they do buy or sell, they choose you because you're working it proactively. That's the secret. Um, average contact attempt per lead, what the top teams are working right now is 35. That means don't give up on a lead until you've called, texted, and emailed them. Combine those three 35 times on average. How many of your leads, if I were to go through your CRM, the leads you created over the last six months, how many of them have over five contact attempts? How many of them have over 10? How many over 15? How many over 20? 35 is what it takes. You know those same leads that you get from Zillow? As of right now, some of our Zillow leads are $800 a piece. If you go and search homes for sale in our area, guess who pops up first? Zillow. So guess what? I can also run a homes for sale in our area ad on Google, pay-per-click, and I can create that lead for under 10 bucks. So I'm paying Zillow $800 or I'm paying Google $10 for the same exact search. What's the difference? Zillow has a nurturing process. What if we can mirror that and we could duplicate that for ourselves? Talk about ROI. Talk about making more money. That's the secret. All right. Um, moving on. Um, uh, last thing before we go next, um, I could, I could spend all day on this. Um, so 
but they're busy. $100,000 agents don't try to be busy. They strive to be productive. There's a big difference. You do not get a trophy for being the busiest. Stop wearing busy like it's a badge of honor. Instead of being busy, strive to be productive. There's a big difference. Speaking of productivity, I'm going to break this down into five steps. It's really, really simple. Number one, you need training. Number two, you have to take the action on the training that you learned. You see, a lot of people will say, hey, Matt, I need more training. But if you really inspect that, you got the training. But training, real training doesn't happen in the classroom. Real training happens in the field. You don't, you don't get training by absorbing. You learn. Most people will say, I'm visual learners. I learn by doing. That's how we all are, really. If we're honest with ourselves, we learn more by taking action on what we learned. But we just get stuck and we want to have we want to collect all this data. We need more. We need more. We need more before we can do more. But in reality, the best teacher is the action that you take, the mistakes that you make. And you just learn from those lessons. You have training and you take action on that training. That's where most people are lacking. They get stuck right there. They don't take enough action on the training. They want more training before they take action. Third is accountability. Now, are you willing to be held accountable to that action that you know you need to take on that training you just got? See, accountability, a lot of people look at look accountability wrong. And this, you, you can find a network of people. You can do this for yourself. But this is how, you, how productive people are productive, right? This is like the, the psychology of the framework. Accountability is crucial. I believe accountability is the highest form of love you can show an individual. Think about people that actually, if you were to say, these are the people that have helped me become the human that I am today. Help me become the leader, the husband, the wife, the spouse, the, the, the friend, whatever it may be. There are people along your path and along your journey, whether it's a teacher, a parent, an aunt or uncle, or a coach or something that helped you develop into the human that you are today. Now, be willing to bet the ones that have the biggest impact were also the ones willing to risk the relationship to hold you accountable to the principles that you said you wanted, to the things that you wanted in life. Accountability is not a bad thing. Accountability is done by the people that care the most for you. Because accountability is observing or noticing without judgment. Most people have been condemned or judged through accountability, which is why they run away from it. But true champions run towards accountability. I was thinking about this last night. Um, and one of the things that I pay, I have three coaches in my life that I pay well over six figures a year for. I don't say that to brag, just to say, like, I invest in this myself because I'm always growing. And one of the things, like, literally, I have a, a fitness coach, um, Alec Cheplak and his wife, um, Shannon, um, do a, have a great program called Cheplak Wellness. Um, it really has helped me with my health and fitness. And I was just thinking last night, like, man, I'm almost done with round five of 75 hard. Am I going to continue that relationship with them? What's the most value? Because they've taught me so much, I can do it without them now. Like I understand the blueprint, but I still pay them really good money because of the daily accountability that I get with that. Right? That's worth the investment because my health is wealth. And I want to make sure that I'm accountable to people that are holding me to a higher standard in that area of my life. Um, enough on accountability. After accountability, that's where you have training, action, accountability, that loop. That's where you build skills. See, too many people think they can build skills from training, but you can't. If you don't take the action, you're not willing to be held accountable to find the gaps in the areas to improve on the action that you took. And that's where the skills are built. And most people don't get to step number four. And they're on this weird cycle. I call it the real estate roller coaster. They get lucky. They get this right lead at the right time. Something falls in their lap, something and they get, they get two under contract and they're, they're high, high on the horse, right? They're like, ah, I've got two under contract. I'm the best ever. And then they stop doing the activities. And then those two clothes are fall apart and they have nothing again. And they start over. And momentum is really, really hard to keep in this business. So that's where you build skills. And last number five um, is you got to recommit. This is a cycle that you don't just do once. Once you have training, you take action on that training. You're held accountable to find the gaps and areas to improve. You build that skill. Then you recommit to do that again. And just a little bit better. Sounds very, very simple, but how many people actually stick to it and do it, especially in this business? It really, really matters. Guys, don't forget this is open forum. Um, ask any questions that you have while you're here. Let me know what questions you have. Anything you want me to dive deeper in, questions you have, observations, ahas, please feel free to share. I wanted to break this down into some different philosophies that I have. 
And so I'm just I'm giving you guys a lot here. Right. Um, but again, this is proven. What is what does it take to be successful in real estate? So those productivity hacks are to be pr a productive human. It's parallel to real estate, but specifically in real estate, you got to take the action. You got to have a proven sales process and you have to have the skills to survive. Right. You got to have the skills to thrive. The skill is to convert leads. As someone said earlier, I need help converting leads. This is how you do. You know how you get better at converting leads? You call more leads. I'll be honest with you. You know, I got I got decent at. I still have tons of room for improvement. I got I got OK at converting leads. You know where that came from? I screwed it up enough times that I learned my lesson. Uh, if Lauren was on here. She says one of my favorite quotes is you're not good yet because you haven't been bad long enough. Too many of us allow our ego to get in the way and we're not willing to do the work that we know is required because we're afraid of how we will look or we're afraid of that mistake we may make, may make or we're afraid of failure on this one phone call or this one meeting. But in reality, failure isn't final. That's how you learn. As long as you're willing to review your game film, that's how you get better. So what action do you, do you need to take? What proven sales process do you need to follow? And what skills do you need to, to survive in this, to thrive in this marketplace? Let's see. I think it's really important. Let me see where my slides are. I'll come back to that. So how do you change and overcome? I think a lot of people are struggling right now. Like how, how do I change with this marketplace? You said, Matt, you said activities need to change, right? I think. Let's, let's talk about change. Change is inevitable. Change is the only thing that ever remains the same. And I think if we realize that we're in a new marketplace, which nobody can argue with, the marketplace has changed. And so one of two things has to happen if that is true. We either change our behaviors, we change our activities, we change our skills in order to get the result that we still want, or if we refuse, refuse to make those changes and we keep being who we used to be, we have to change the outcome that we desire. One of those two has to happen. So which change? Do you want to change your goals? Do you want to change your income level? Or do you want to change your behaviors, your mindset, your activities, and your skills? One of those two has to change. But change starts with a choice. And I think a lot of people struggle with choice. And they give their power to outside circumstances. And I want to give you your power back. We all have the power of choice. And I think what we mistake the importance of not making a choice is still a choice. S not making a choice. And I call it squirreling. Um, here in the Midwest, we have squirrels run across the road all the time. And if you've been in the Midwest, you've probably seen it. There's a squirrel in the middle of the road as you're driving by. And the squirrel goes, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. And doesn't know where to go. Which side of the road should they run on? Because they're stuck in the middle. And then smack. Now they're dead. Don't be a squirrel. Make a decision. If you run across the road and that's not the right path, that's okay. Run back on the other side. But don't stay in the middle and squirrel because that's you'll get hit by a car. Right? Um, that's my funny analogy of, uh, of, of that. Um, I'm afraid of sounding pushy. I love that, Elizabeth. I'll come back to that. I want to dive deeper. So, um, Elizabeth, thank you for that. I would love for you to think a little more in depth on what do you mean by that? What do you feel sounds pushy? Like really evaluate that and we'll have some dialogue on that um, in a little bit. I love that. Again, everything starts with mindset. Tony Robbins, you may have heard of him. 80% of the salesperson's success is dictated by the mindset that they have. Only 20% is everything else. That's why we spent... 35 minutes going into mindset, going to environment, because this is everything. I'm going to give you skills. I'm going to give you tactics. I'm going to give you proven processes. But if you don't get this part right, those don't matter. Super important. We need to stop negotiating. Stop negotiating with our goals. Stop negotiating with the thoughts in our head. I'll give you an analogy. Um, so I've been doing something recently. And I've been cold plunging. I got a cold plunge at my house. I do it for a couple of reasons. I think there's some health benefits in it. But the real reason that I do it, I want to start my morning 
with something so hard that I regret that I don't want to do. And if I do that every morning, it doesn't get easier. If you ever cold plunge, it doesn't get easier. It is miserable. But I do it every day. And it's the first thing I start my day with. And something psychologically happens, it makes the rest of my day easier. I don't negotiate with a cold plunge. I don't negotiate with my 75 hard stuff. I don't negotiate with my calendar. I don't negotiate with my goals. When I did the 30 day listings and 30 day challenge, I hadn't set a listing appointment in four years. I had no clue how I was going to make it happen. But I'm determined I made a commitment. I didn't negotiate with my commitment. You either find a way or you find an excuse. Too many people haphazard things. What is this brand called that's hosting this today? All or nothing. If you're going to do it, give it your all. Go all in. Too many people just dibble and dabble in this thing and that thing, and they don't jump in with both feet. You got to jump. Give it your all. Stop negotiating with ourselves. Every time we negotiate with ourselves, think about this. You're not just negotiating with yourself, but you're negotiating with the dreams, the hopes, and the desires of the people that you love. I was very fortunate to be able to take my kids to Disney World last year. If I negotiate with my goals, I don't get to make that trip. I got a family relying on me. You have people looking up to you. You have things that matter to you in your life. Stop negotiating with them. Just do it. What happens over time is you start building this consistency and this confidence in yourself, and then you become unstoppable. Choice is all that matters. And again, sales skills and consistency. I think urgency is important, but consistency is crucial. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my yo-yo store. I made a post um, kind of embarrassing, but I was just on my heart and I shared yesterday on social media of my five-year journey, um, just kind of reflecting on a few things. And one of the things I used to be good at is I've always had this all or nothing mindset. If I do something, I'm all in. I'm not afraid of commitment. I'm going to go and I'm going to go. I'm like obsessive personality. But I liked a little bit of consistency. And I think like, let me put this in a real estate perspective. Which agent is going to sell more real estate? I'd like for you guys to participate in the chat. Agent A or Agent B. So get ready to type Agent A or Agent B. Agent A comes into the office one day per week and makes 300 dials one day. Makes no other dials the rest of the week. That's their work schedule. They make 300 outbound dials, but they do it one day a week. Agent B comes in the office five days per week and they make $20 per day, but they do it five days per week. It's only $100 per week. Which agent wins at the end of the year? Agent A? that did three times the activity or agent B that had the consistency. Who do you think sells more real estate at the end of the year? Agent A or agent B? Put in the chat. Agent B all day long. You see, um, one of the things that I've learned is that Sometimes when you have an obsessive personality, we all agree, B, right? So why don't we act more like Agent B? Why don't we develop that consistent routine that we can do each and every day without fail and just stick to it and do it? Promise you that's what the $100,000 agents do. They work on purpose, not on accident. They have a proactive plan. Um, And I think that consistency is just absolutely crucial. I was going to go down another rabbit hole. I'm going to move on. You guys get it. I love that you all answered B. Why do agents, so we talked about why, why agents don't make 100K. Why do agents make 100K? Number one, they're educated. Number two, they're willing to make adjustments. They're adaptable. Number three, they doubled down on the fundamentals of their business. And this is something that I've observed. I didn't make this up. These are my observations being in the top, some of the top performing rooms in the country over the last three years. Coach Bill Pipes, John Cheplak, Rise Khan, Fub Khan. Um, I'm going to be in Inman this year. Like I'm, I'm in, a, I've been in Canada. I've been in Cabo. I've been, been privileged to speak on some of these and I met the speakers and like, this is what they are doing. And this is what's working. They, they're educated. They're willing to be adaptable and quick, quick to change and innovate. 
but they also double down on the fundamentals. When I say innovate, too many agents say squirrel, right? And they want this new shiny object. That's not what I'm saying by innovate. They're willing to make the change that the market demands. And right now, guess what that change is? Double down on the fundamentals. They act quickly and they act decisively. They don't squirrel. It's one of my favorite quotes. If you know me, you know I'm a quotes guy. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I want you to change the way you look at this market. I want you to change the way you look at the interest rates. I want you to change the way you look at this NAR lawsuit. I want you to realize that all of those present massive opportunity if you choose to look at it that way. If you just adopt that and you find, instead of saying all the things that could go wrong, what if you find the thing that provides an opportunity for you? What if you find your slight edge? What if you find that one little opening in the gap that can help you be the breakthrough for your business? Change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I'll go through this quickly. I believe I've done a whole presentation on this before, but life happens for you, not to you. I think being a victim of your circumstance is just a, a, a lonely, miserable road. Everything happens for a reason. We've all heard that before. If you realize that all of these things happen for you, you are the person you are today because of the hardships, because of the things you've overcome. And with something I've realized about the highest performers in the world, they've all overcome. They've all overcome something in their lives. We all have a story. If you just realize that it doesn't happen to you, you don't fall victim, it makes a big difference. We talked about all or nothing, zero options. You did it or you didn't. Um, and guess what? We all get knocked down. It's all right. Just get back up. Oh, time for that story. Um, let's talk, let's get tactical. Let's go tactics. Foundation of sales. This is as simple as I can break down the sales process for you guys. You need these four buckets and you need processes for each of these four buckets. Number one, how do you convert leads? It should be five, sorry. How do you create leads? Lead creation should be number one. How do you create leads? Number two, how do you convert leads? How do you take a lead, turn them to a client? What is your process? Number three, how do you take a client, convert them to a contract? So how do you get them from a listing sign to a listing under contract? A buyer signed to a buyer under contract. What does your under contract process look like? If you're on a team like ours, we have an amazing TC and ops team that does that, right? So what does that look like for you? And do you have that dialed in? Because this is it. most agents drop the ball here. And they do the bare minimum. This is a chance for you to go to the extra mile. One of the things we focus on is the client experience is everything. And so what experience are they having once they're under contract? What does the handoff look like? Are they getting that? We call it a red carpet service. Super important. That you want to talk about referrals. You want to talk about uh, word of mouth advertising. That's where it's at right there. Um, and then past client plan. Once they're closing, did you just wipe your hands with them and move on? Or do you realize you help them with the biggest purchase or sale of their life? And you want them to be a client forever. You want them to be a referral referral source forever. And you want to provide them value forever. You want to market to them. You want to give them value. You want to bring them into your world and they're a part of your family forever. Um, those are the foundation. Do you have a process for each? You should. Really quickly, here's the five must-haves to make a, a $100,000 real estate agent. Number one, mindset. We all talk, We already talked about that. Number two, role play. Yes, I'm talking about practice. If you aren't practicing in role play, you're practicing on your clients and they deserve better. You've got to role play with each other. you got to role play with yourself. If you're not practicing on what to say, how to say it, these little nuances, communication is crucial. It is so key. If you're not practicing those things, then you're practicing on your clients and I believe they deserve better. Um, also in role play, most people stop when they get it right. They nail it. They nail a script and they're in role play. And yes, round of applause. Great job. But guess what? That's what the average agent does. They can get it right every now and then. You know what the $100,000 agent does? They practice until they can't get it wrong. It's so ingrained in you. It's second nature. And you nail it every time because you've done it over and over and over and over. I call that mastery. You don't need more things. You need less things and be better at those less things. Mastery is you learn it, you do it, and you do it so much that you can teach it to others. If you've ever taught anything to anyone, you will understand there's a major difference between learning 
or sorry, between doing and teaching. If you can't teach it, you haven't mastered it. Number three, education. Right now, it is prime opportunity for you to be the education for all of your clients proactively. Yes, on the phone. Yes, while you're showing. Yes, while you're listing. But what about your marketing initiative? What about your video initiative? What about your blogs, your email newsletters? What about what you're putting on your social media? Is it just houses? Are you educating them about what's going on? Are you educating them about the marketplace? Are you being the steady lighthouse in the storm that is going on in real estate? We've got waves and lightning and thunder and hurricanes of all this NAR and interest rates and yada, yada, yada. Are you being the steady, giving them the real news to be that trusted resource? It's so important. Not only are you giving them that, but also what about yourself? How educated are you on the market? How educated are you on the process? Do you actually, can you actually articulate it at a high level? You see, I have a lot of my agents here on my team um, are, are kind of concerned if we get objections or different things with uh, what's going on with the NAR stuff. And so um, we're, we're talking about it quite a bit. But the reality is the client is probably not as educated as us. And if we have that education, we have that confidence in ourselves, then it makes it way easier for us to have that conversation. I don't shy away from that quote unquote conflict. That's how you get to resolution. I hear them out. I want to hear their perspective. And I want to provide my my opinion as a professional because I'm aware and I'm educated. And if you're not, you're just like the average agent. The $100,000 agent is educated on all these things. Number four, prospecting and follow up. I said it earlier, if you don't have an appointment, you don't have a job, you're unemployed. If you're not spending at least two hours a day prospecting new leads, creating new leads, following up with existing leads, what are you really doing? Let's be honest. Yes, real estate agent is real estate is hard. Yes, you have some late nights. Yes, you have weekends. All that is true. But on a normal day, how many hours do you actually work? When I say work, as an agent, you get paid on commission. When work to me defined as an agent, especially on our team, where we have these systems and processes put in place, prospecting, negotiating, and showing or listing. How much of your time, if you really broke it down and were honest with your calendar and you went back the last 90 days and you were to average it in the last 90 work days of those three things, prospecting or follow up, negotiating contracts or showing or listing property. How much of your time are you actually doing that per week? The average agent, it's probably less than 10. But the agents like to talk about how busy they are all the time. But they're busy, not productive. Be intentional with your time. This is a big one. This is what separates people. This is a separator right here. It sounds easy, but it's not. I'd be willing to bet most of you are hanging up on more clients than clients are hanging up on you. i say it again. Most of you are hanging up on more clients than clients are hanging up on you. What do I mean by that? Are you physically hanging up with them? I hope not. But I can classify a hang up as anything other than ending that phone call or ending that appointment, either one without a next step, a clear next step. And a next step does not mean I'll send you properties. Let me know what you like. Hey, yeah, we'll, we'll meet back up next week. Okay, talk with your husband and get back with me. That's a hang up. Specific. I had one today from a listing appointment I went on last week. I asked that she said she needed to talk with her husband. Perfect. Completely understand that a lot of moving parts going on. So I completely understood. Understand. I said, when would be a good day for me to follow up with you next week? I don't know. She said, just someday next week. I said, awesome. I've got Tuesday at two o'clock. How does that work? She's like, oh nope, I've got an appointment then. I said, okay. How about Wednesday at three? Uh, Wednesday at one. I don't know what time it was. To, it was today. So we actually narrowed down a time for a follow-up call specifically because I work on purpose. I work with a plan instead of me playing phone tag and going back and forth and me not being able to model and demonstrate that I'm a, I'm an agent of integrity. I'm an agent that says what I'm going supposed to, that I do what I'm going to, what I said I was going to do. So important. 
So if you end a phone call without writing or end an appointment without phone, writing a contract, you end a phone call without setting an appointment. That appointment can be in person, can be via Zoom, or it can even be a phone call for an, or an appointment for another phone call. Let's say it's a follow up conversation. Set a specific time to follow up with them. Not later. Not I'll send you properties. Specific follow up. And then you gather the properties and you actually maybe schedule a Zoom where you go over the properties with them. Makes a world of difference. And never, ever, ever say I'm calling a touch base. Never send, use that, lose follow up and touching base are dead. Don't do it. Get rid of it from your vocabulary. Um, I'm going to go quickly through this uh, at the end here. We've got a, um, I'm going to respect your guys' time. I've got a download that has this, but here's here. My 15 hour work week. It's literally a blueprint that if you commit to 15 hours a week, like I said, the average agent works less than 10 actually works. Now, are they present? Sure. Are they busy? Maybe. Are they productive? Less than 10 hours per week. My opinion. And I'm not saying that to demean anyone. It's just my observations. So all that being said, my proven 15 hour work week that if you follow this, you will sell, you will make $100,000 in real estate. I'll, I'll give it to you for free at the end. It's, it's broken down. It's through here, but we're running out of time. Now, I told you I'd tell you guys how to lead generate. How do we create leads with no money? Number one, don't spend a penny on leads until you have a follow-up process built out. So you have a CRM and your process built out. It should take you a whole two hours. So don't overcomplicate it. You just need something. I gave you the blueprint earlier. Go back and watch this recording. Go and um, reach out to me. And I'll send you my whole one hour in depth if you need it. But literally, you just need a CRM. You need start, You need four stages, maybe five. And you need to categorize them in those stages. And each stage has a certain follow-up cadence. Get that in place before you start generating leads. But let's say if, if you drop me anywhere, you drop me anywhere in the, in the I don't want to say world because I can't speak the language, anywhere in America, you drop me in any market, you give me 90 days, I I want to really want to try this. Uh, me and uh, um, who was it? It may have been Jeff Willems, uh, one of my EXP uh, network business partners, um, talked about doing this as a reality show. If I had the time, I would do this and I would do it like a, for a real estate something. Um, but anyway, drop me anywhere. Give me 90 days. I guarantee you in 90 days, I got 10 pending contracts. I don't care what market it is. You know what I would do? An open house every day. You know what I would offer the neighbors when I door knocked? An easy CMA and update on value of their home. You know what else I would do? I'd create a sphere of influence by getting to know the neighbors. You don't need to spend money to generate leads. I'm just going to grab people and I'm going to grab grab phone numbers and grab names. I'm going to shake hands. I'm going to get to know people. I'm going to have open house signs. So when I say no money, all right, maybe I need a hundred bucks for a few open house signs. That's where I'll start. Right? Like it's, it's really, it, it, I don't have any listings. How do I do an open house? Go find it for sale by owner. You think they'll let you host one? Sell it for free. Just allow me to do the advertising to get people in. Create a free Facebook. For social media ads, there's there's all kinds of things I could dive in there, but not having money is not an excuse to not lead generate. And then once you generate the leads, go back to the conversion cycle we talked about. And I want to end here. I could tell you success story after success story after success story that all of this is the back is the backbone of this entire webinar that went over has changed the foundation of so many agents' lives on my team from agents that I coach. And I can tell you story after story of agents coming in, following something similar to this, doubling their income in year one, doubling it again in year two. That means four times their income in two years. Agents that um, have been able to buy multiple investment properties, agents that went from um, not being able to afford to keep their car going to show properties to buying a brand new car and a new house in the same year. Agents that have been able to buy their dream house so that they, their, their husband, Lauren, who was on here, kind of on here earlier, um, her and her husband moved, fulfilled their dream of living at the Lake of the Ozarks so that he could go fish for a living. He's now fishing tournaments. I don't even know how many tournaments, probably, probably 200 tournaments a year. And he's going professional next year. And he's won ungodly amount of tournaments that he's been in all because of this career in this framework. 
And so this is proven. How many of these stories do you need to hear before you create your own? You want some resources? You want a script for sphere of influence? You want open house process that I said you drop me anywhere? I'll create these leads. Material list that you will need and my 15 hour work week. It's all right there. And uh, someone asked, can you get a copy of the slideshow? Um, yes, absolutely you can. Um, I'll send a, um, we'll send out a recording to everyone that registered too, so you can have this recording to keep on file. Um, I want to leave, we've got a few minutes left. I want to wanted to leave some time here to ask, to open it up for Q&A. Are there any gaps in any of this that I can help fill for you? Are there any questions that you have? Anything that maybe I could explain more in depth? Anything you were hoping to hear that maybe I didn't cover? I'm an open book. Um, you took your time to be here today. I absolutely appreciate it. I know your time is valuable. Help me help you. What other questions do you have? I'm Elizabeth. I'd love to, if you're still here, I would love to dive deeper in your question on you're afraid of sounding pushy. Um, I'd love to know more about what you feel, what we covered, or maybe what your experience in your business feels that way to you. Um, and I'd love to unpack that. Uh, if you could kind of elaborate on that, I'm happy to help. Um, Brian, do I have an office in the KC market? No, we don't. Um, but uh, have an office in the KC market. I don't have an office in the KC market, but I have some business partners there through our EXP network and happy to connect you if there's if there's something you're looking, maybe I don't know if you're looking for a referral, if you're looking for maybe we could partner together or um, whatever that may be. Um, reach out to me, Brian. Happy to have that conversation. I can connect you or um, happy, happy to help any way I can there. I'm not sure what you're looking for, but I don't have an office, but that doesn't mean that I can't help. Maybe I can. Um, Elizabeth, how do you make it where you don't sound pushy like a used car salesman? Um, I think it's really simple. I think used car salesmen talk at people and great salespeople talk. So great salespeople talk with people. And so I use simple frameworks, Elizabeth. You have two ears and one mouth. When you're having a conversation with a person, you should be listening twice as much as you're talking. Where used car salesman sales, sales used car salesman comes in is I think people over talk, they oversell. And they don't allow, they try to be the hero of the story instead of allowing the client to be the hero of their own story. And so how do we as a salesperson lead and guide them? Because it's our responsibility to be the leader. We don't follow them. We are the leader for them, but we ask great questions. Most salespeople struggle with what should I say? But great salespeople realize it's not what you say, it's the questions you ask. And so it's so important that you, that you ask great real estate questions. Um, and so it's, uh, there's, there's scripting things that we can go through and, um, and maybe, maybe that's another webinar that we'll do, or maybe I'll put together a live role play or, or something. Um, I, I think sometimes there is a, there's a stigma around being a salesperson, but I, and I understand it, Elizabeth, um, cause I don't want to sound that way either, but I also think that sometimes we take that a little bit too far and we don't want to be a salesperson. But the reality of the situation is you have to be in this marketplace in order to make $100,000 plus. You don't have to. It's, it helps tremendously if you realize that sales is not anything other than being able to articulate and guide people through the sales process and leading them through that process and leading them through a process to help them make a decision that you know and they know is best for them. I think what used car salesman vibe is when people try to walk people through that process and they try to guide them through that process, probably pushing them through that process versus guiding them. And they also push them through the process to do what's best for the salesperson, not what's best for the client. And I think those two subtleties are very important. A salesperson, a great salesperson, in my opinion, guides them and leads them through the process so that they can make the decision that's best for them, not best for the salesperson. Literally in one of our uh, our sales meeting this week, one of our agents, uh, our veteran agents told a story about how he met with a client. He brought him in the office. He met with a client at the end of it. He said, I, I want to help you guys the best I can. But with your guys' specific situation, the best way I can help you is tell you now is not a good time for you to purchase. How many salespeople do that? 
But that I'll just be honest with you. That is the most brilliant sales move of all time. That's not why he did it. He did it because we have, we're a company of integrity. He's a man of integrity. He wanted to do the right thing to legitimately help these people. But he took the time to meet with them knowing that was probably going to be the outcome. And he guided them so they could understand why. And guess what? I promise you will happen from that. When they do get ready to buy, who are they going to use? Talk about the level of authority and trust. And then what about their friends? What about the referral business? Because you did the right thing. Um, I hope that helps, Elizabeth. If you have more, keep going. I, I, I've got another 10 minutes I can stay on. If you guys keep asking questions, I'm, I'm here to help. I got I got a hard stop at 315, but I'm, I'm here till then. Um, so it's uh, about nine more minutes. Um, let's see. How do we get the follow up plan training? Um, so I need more specifics, follow up plan training. So I don't know what you're looking for there. So I, I did. A, I, if you're looking for the webinar, um, reach out to me and I can send that out. That's not a part of this packet. I, don't, I have one. I'm not sure where it's where it's housed at, but I'm happy to send it. Um, just reach out to me after this webinar, um, Jimmy, um, on uh, on social or however, and um, go to all or nothing, whatever. Just reach out to me and I'm happy to send that recording. I'll have to dig and find it. But I did a whole hour webinar of this, breaking that down on what that, um, what that, how to set up your CRM and how to follow up. Um, Zillow, you mentioned Zillow leads. Uh, do you have a system that matches their strategy at a lower cost? Oh, so... I was using that as an example and a reference. Um, I think too many people, it's a great question. So let me, let me unpack that. Um, what I was trying to articulate there that I didn't just for time's sake, didn't get to go in depth on. So I appreciate you asking is so many people will say, and, and again, this is my knowledge of the top teams around and having just networking across the nation is that a lot of teams that you see on the real change rankings just came out. Right. And a lot of those teams that you see, and this is no disrespect, they're amazing. But a lot of them, if you unpack their lead sources, they're things like Zillow Flex or 30, 40 percent of their business. Right. And that's just basically that's come list me business, but it's come come meet me buyer business, too. Um, and a very hefty referral fee. And Zillow owns that business, not the, not the agent. And so I have nothing wrong with that business model. Um, we have a couple of things. Flex doesn't exist in my market, but we do buy. So I do buy Zillow leads. Um, but it's sparingly. And the reason being is because I've created an internal sales process that I somewhat broke down today. And in that webinar that you asked for, Jimmy, like it breaks it down a little more in depth. It's not like a product that I'm selling. Like I'm not doing this to sell anything. I'm just doing this to give. Um, and so I don't have anything to sell. Um, there's, there's my pitch. Um, but I, I do, I just want to help. And I think that, um, a lot of agents will spend that money on Zillow leads that cost and again, up, upwards of $800 in our market when I'm getting the same exact search term from a pay-per-click lead for $8. And so if knowing that those are the same person, what is the difference by the time I get it from Zillow? Zillow just incubated that lead. They've marketed them. They send them properties. They maybe sent them to an ISA to have a conversation. They said, are you ready to talk to an agent? And then they convert them. And they send them to us. And now that same $8 lead now is magically 800. I believe that I can create that same process internally for way less than 790 bucks per lead. And so that's what I meant by that. And I think that a lot of people will rely on those other lead sources, but there's nothing magic to them other than they created the opportunity. Like leads right now, online leads are just a dime a dozen. I'll go, if you don't believe me, Look at your next five closest, 10 closest, 20 closest competitors in your marketplace. And if you were to download a CSV of your databases side by side, I bet you got an 80% match rate. You guys have the same exact leads. You're just paying for them in different sources. They come in at different times. And so buying the lead is not the magic is my point. The magic is the lead nurture and proven sales process that you have once you create the lead. And so it and. I think that it depends on where your business is. It depends on where your goal is. Cause I just don't, I don't believe in coaching people in a one size fits all because everybody's unique. And I think one of the unique things is that if you have a smaller budget and you want to grow and you're willing to invest the time to grow, maybe it's not a good time for you to buy high dollar leads. Maybe it's not even a good time for you to buy pay-per-click leads. Maybe you just find a, a database of homeowners and you start doing easy CMAs. 
telling them what their home's worth. Maybe start doing an open house a day. And at the open houses, you just door knock the, the 15 neighbors to the left and the 15 neighbors to the right. Maybe you invest in 25 cheap pointer signs for open houses. Instead of pointing one, one, uh, one open house sign out, put 25. Right, like these, these little things over time make a massive difference. All right, guys, I appreciate you showing up. I appreciate this interaction at the end. I wish I knew a way to, I couldn't even get Lauren who's going to help me present on. So I don't even know how to get you guys on. I wish I could, but uh, I appreciate, um, appreciate your guys' time. Um, and I hope this was valuable. Again, download these free resources. If there's anything else you need, reach out. I'm here to be a resource and here to help. And I hope this puts you on the path so that you can make 100K plus and then some. See you guys.